So how long does it take to design a distribution network? And what are the different approaches that you can use? I get that question a lot. And that's what we're going to be answering coming right up. Okay, so I've noticed something, it's a little bit of a trend in recent years, that people, when they want to check their distribution network or they want to redesign a distribution network, immediately jump into loads and loads of detail. Um, maybe it's because the tools are out there to do that now, but I'd like to just step back a little bit and talk through maybe three or four different levels of approach that you could use. Uh, some are a lot less time consuming and resource hungry. And if I look back, I mean, I've been doing network design projects here at uh, Logistics Bureau for probably oh, 25 years, because uh, I was doing it for a couple of years prior to that at Dawson Consulting. Um, and we used to do it all on spreadsheets in the early days because there were no specialist tools around. Now there are some great tools. I mean, we use tools like Supply Chain Guru and so on. Um, but let's, let's maybe wind the clock back and think about some of the simple ways that can work as well as some of the more modern complex ways. Okay, so let's think about what you're trying to understand from modeling your distribution network, whether it be a totally new distribution network that you're setting up or perhaps you want to just check an existing one. So look, there are some fairly simple back of the envelope approaches that you could use. Um, you could do these on a simple spreadsheet or even on a whiteboard, to be honest. So let's paint a little bit of a scenario. Uh, assume that you're thinking in Australia. So Australian geography is really awkward for distribution um, because we've got most of our population on the east coast, near, near the coast, uh, and then we have about 7% of our population way over the other side on the west coast. And people often, you know, who are new to the Australian geography kind of think, well, why can't we just have a national warehouse and we'll service everybody? Well, because it takes about three or four days to get across to the West Coast. So inevitably, people end up, you know, the minimum number of distribution centres that you can have is kind of one East Coast and one West Coast, depending on the service offer. We talk about that a lot on these videos. So do check out some of the other videos about network design here. So how would you do a rough check on a whiteboard, well, you might have a look at your existing costs, say, with uh, an East Coast warehouse, and then very simply, you could compare the, co the added cost of distribution for a West Coast uh, warehouse by just saying, look, what's the total amount that we may have to move across the country? What's the transport rate to move all of that over there? Um, you know, that's that extra line haul or trunking cost, it, we need to factor that in. Comparing that, of course, with servicing customers directly from the East Coast. So you're going to have a look at the trunking, the line haul cost, the added cost of a warehouse in the West, and is that better than actually servicing from the East Coast? So that's just a very simple back of the envelope approach. But you don't need to do a month study and so on with specialist tools to work that one out. Um, some simple spreadsheet models. Um, I might um, share some examples of that in a future video, but uh, oh, 20 years ago, we used to build some really complicated models just on spreadsheets using Visual Basic and so on. Uh, but you can do a lot on spreadsheets. You can test, you know, transport rates and volumes and so on. Um, so you know, you don't need optimization tools. You can you can do that sort of whiteboard approach, but just on a spreadsheet and get a, a degree of accuracy. And then you can test different volumes going through different lanes and so on. Um, some of the specialist models that, that you can use, I mean, I used a product called Cast for, for years and years, which was really good. Uh, that's now morphed into Supply Chain Guru from Llamasoft. That's a product that we now use, which is great. Um, but even then, with some of these specialist tools, you can use them at different levels. You don't have to launch into something that's really data intensive. So whatever specialist tool that you might be using, you know, you could use set up generic transport rates, whether that be a cost per ton per pallet or a cost per, you know, cost per unit per kilometer. Uh, you could set that up and just test the number of different warehouses in the network and have a look at the influence of transport costs. You could do the same with warehouse costs. You could have some fixed and variable costs set up in the model, uh, which are the same for sort of each state. And then you could test uh, different numbers of warehouses in the network and, and see how that impacts the overall cost. Uh, and then you could do the same with inventory levels and different service offers going out to the customers. So just using generic rates, 
And that might give you a quick indication of should we have one, two, three, four, five, six, ten warehouses and some of the uh, orders of magnitude of change in those costs. So that's another option. Um, one, it's, I, I guess most of the options that we tend to work with with clients is that they've kind of done the back of the envelope and we get into much more detailed studies where we're using tools like Supply Chain Guru um, and we're looking at individual demand by customer or by postcode. We might be modeling specifically by SKU, stock keeping unit, or more generally by product group, product family. Uh, we would be setting up individual transport costs per transport lane. So I'm based here in Australia. We'd be looking at you know Sydney, Melbourne, and Melbourne, Sydney, and Sydney, Brisbane, the line haul or trunking costs, and then the delivery costs going out to customers for metro customers and regional customers. So all of that's really important to get right if we need a high degree of accuracy on our modeling. Um, and you know individual distribution center rates because the costs of land and building and labor differ from city to city and obviously from city to regional areas. So you can put that in as well. So if you're wanting a really robust analysis, like a business case of this distribution network versus this distribution network and a whole bunch of sub scenarios, then that very detailed approach is the one that you need to do. Um, so let me just run back through them um, and talk about how long does it take to do these. So I mean, that back of the envelope one, uh, which you could almost do on a whiteboard or a spreadsheet, you can probably do that in a day, just to give you a sense of, of whether something's going to work or not. Very rough and ready, of course. Um, you know, a little bit more complicated on a spreadsheet model, you could probably do in a week. Um, some of the s more specialist tools, as I mentioned, we use, we use um, Supply Chain Guru. Even a very simple model um, is probably going to take us three to four weeks. Uh, because an important part of this is making sure that we understand the current cost and service parameters of the business. We have to set the model up so it replicates that before we start modeling alternatives. And then that detailed one um, might surprise you <laughs> to go through in a lot of detail to get a business case. I um, mean, it all depends on the complexity of the business and to be honest, the quality of the data. I have had so many businesses in the last 12 months say, our data's great, it won't be a problem. And we ended up spending two months fixing the data. Uh, so you know, what kind of data causes the problem? It's usually product data because you need to know weights and dimensions and things to be able to attribute warehousing and transport costs to it. Um, so that, that sort of very detailed level, ah, oh, look, if, if the data's good, probably that's a three month project, three to four months. Uh, at that level of detail. So there you go. Look, just a quick run through. If you want to have a look at your own distribution network, whether it's doing it yourself or having people like us help you out, um, you know, a whiteboard, back of the envelope, you know, don't discount that. Uh, you, can, you can use that to, to get some very rough and ready comparisons, spreadsheet models, specialist tools, there are lots of them out there, um, and getting into very detailed modeling. So anything from you know, a couple of days to three or four months, depending on the complexity and the degree of accuracy that you want. It's really all about the accuracy. If, you're, if, you're going to, if you want to go to the board and say, hey, we're going to save $25 million, but we've got to spend $12 million, you need the detail and the accuracy. If someone just says, hey, is it worth setting up a warehouse in Perth? We're not sure. You could probably do that on the back of an envelope. So I hope that makes sense. Now, if you've got any questions on distribution networks, you know how this works, comment below. I will personally answer any questions that you have. Uh, also on this channel, there are loads of other videos about distribution networks and warehousing and so on. So we'll put some links below, but do have a look around on the channel because there's tons of them. And um, if you aren't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and also the bell because that way you'll be notified every time a new video comes out and we have new videos coming out every Wednesday. So I'll see you next Wednesday and I hope you enjoyed this video.